I am Kathy Putnam, and I'm based in Philadelphia. I'm a painter. Um, I work in mixed media, and I, my subject matter is um, typically girlhood throughout various stages of development. My name is Kahori Kamiya. I was born in Japan and moved to New York, where I received the MFA at the School of Visual Art. Uh, I work with sculpture, painting, uh, video, and performance. My work stems from uh, cultural identity and the experience of woman food. Uh, I just recently did my performance at the Flux Factory, and I'm working for my solo show for next spring. My name is Moses Ross. I'm based in the Bronx. I'm a multi multidisciplinary artist. I uh, make uh, sculpture, also some painting, and also uh, printmaking. Um, my play, as we're going to get into, I combine the different mediums to create uh, something that's different. And um, I think that uh, a play is crucial to being an artist. You have to have fun in the work that you do, and so make it satisfying for your own fulfillment. I'm Sarah Dollinger. Um, I'm based in Queens, and I uh, have a multimedia practice as well with many different spheres to it. Um, in my individual practice, I'm a printmaker and I also make video and installation. And I'm very involved in collaborative uh, work, so my main practice is collaborative. Um, the main one I co-direct is called Springboard Collective. And we make immersive installations that are um, very interactive, very much like activated by the audience and programmed with performances and live events and reference very playful things like roller skating and ice cream and deep frying and things that are kind of uh, just like associated with play or leisure activities. And then I'm also involved in a collaborative group called whoop doo which uh, does kind of public access style live performances that involve uh, very elaborate DIY sets that are made with local youth groups and then feature local performance groups. So, very many people involved and all very playful kind of ideas and concepts centered around like fun and engaging for the audience. So that's kind of a summary of my practice, but I guess getting into the idea of play, if we're gonna do that. Uh, I was thinking about the idea of escape and how it can have like a bad connotation sometimes as like a way to not directly deal with like real topics or real reality, you know? and art as escape as a negative thing, but I actually think it's a very positive way to like directly talk about things indirectly. <laughs> like to play is to kind of like shake off the constraints of, you know, what is considered normal or what is expected of something. So playfulness is like a way to discover new things. But I don't know, do you guys experience that in your own work at yeah. all? Yeah, uh, I want to share about my um, playful art, how influenced to my artwork. Um, around 170 years ago in Tokyo, such a huge earthquake hit there and more than 10,000 people died. The, what's very surprising thing was right after this disaster happened, uh, Edo painter started to create a uh, catfish motif the wood print and um, it's so playfully they made that. Some are even connecting with political issues as a metaphor to use and some are having uh, like spiritual meaning so people can also correct them to use as a protection. So kind of losing someone is such a very painful experience but a piece of painting became a trigger to start healing people. And it's like almost therapeutic way. So I really inspired by this episode. And I also wanted to make an accessible sculpture that resonates with Japanese culture. And I started a series called Disaster Art. It's a human-sized sculpture people can go in or wear and also go through. And most recently, I made a wearable sculpture. Uh, that's a face mask and awarded that to the Hudson Barimoka. At that time, it was very hard 
to get materials because the high demand on online shopping and also we couldn't touch or feel before buying. So I started to look for the materials inside the house and my favorite uh, place was my children's toy boxes. So I really like the one wooden tiles. It's a building toys. I have been watching how they are playing with and it's really like a careful, uh, it's almost like a zen-like moment to play with. It's unlike uh, Lego pieces. It doesn't stick together so easy to demolish. It makes me really nostalgic feeling, but I didn't know exactly where this feeling from. But I wanted to use this material for being my art piece, the making face mask sculpture, and started work. I just realized, oh, this material is such a similar with uh, when we go temple in Japan, there is a wooden stick there, and we also write down our wishes there. So it's really similar, like a color and the like texture and lightness. So it's really, I thought, oh, made sense to use this material uh, to be a, a part of my art. Uh, I really like the moment when I discover my old memory and connect with materials, like uh, finding a soulmate and, and turn into my artwork. For me, I would say my relationship with playfulness is complicated, um, and I would, it's, it's somewhat in my subject matter, um, but, and I can talk more about that um, a little bit later, but the, the, talking about materials, when I introduced mixed media into my practice, I really had been just painting, you know, brain to hand to paintbrush to surface, and um, that kept me very rigid. I was very intentional about everything that went down on the surface, and I didn't discover very much. Um, and in graduate school, I took a class where we were to use print making in other surfaces, not as the print, as the finished product. And I've had no formal training in print, but I learned how to screen print, which I think is sort of the simplest process. And started with just pattern and began to move into some things that were more personal. I was very interested in maps and borders and how they affect children and, and lots of different things. But what really happened for me that was um, transformative is that I lost control. So I get, I get very analytical and, and I get into a problem solving mode when I work. And if I print something and I cut it up and I put it down and it's a different texture, I don't really know what it's going to look like until it's interacting with the other things on the surface. Everything changes everything else. And I often don't like it, so I'll glue it on and it'll be on there a long time and then I'll rip it off and it leaves sort of a ghost of what I had put there. And that will lead me to something else. So I, I kind of create conditions to force myself to either be playful or end up with results that would come out of playfulness, which is discovery and surprise. I guess that's the same thing. Well, I have, I have to say that uh, my background is, uh, I'm, a, I'm a registered architect in New York State, so I, that's, I do that. Um, but I also do my artwork and that uh, the architecture kind of informs my, the artwork that I, that I create. So it, what I'm currently doing is like the, the printmaking that I'm doing, it's a two-dimensional uh, surface and it's uh, sort of like creating a template for a, a three-dimensional object. In this case, I'm working with these figures that I call angels and they, they have the body, let's say, of a lion or, or a bull, which for myself represents like work. And, but the head is like a human head, so like a human head, so to give it the human aspect. And from that, it has wings, which represents freedom. So it's sort of work through freedom is, is the concept of, of those pieces. And then what I'll do is make the print, like let's say if it's a woodcut, 
with these different template pieces. It's a template. And then I can put it together and make this three-dimensional object from a two-dimensional object. And with this, this message, and it can either stand alone or I could make it into mobiles or I can have it where it's attached to uh, the, the two-dimensional surface. So you see the template and it's like a pop-up almost. So that's the playfulness that we're, that we're talking about. And also what's left, what I cut out of the print, those negative spaces then uh, is also the process. And so people are led into that, that portion of the artwork. So it has different aspects. There's the two-dimensional, three-dimensional, the connectedness, the, the mobiles that have the, the movement, so it comes, sort of comes alive as well. Those are very ephemeral works, you know, works on paper. But the other aspect that I do is I do public sculpture. So for instance, there's a, a sculpture I did for a new building that was a, a daycare center. And it used to be a community garden and they had a casita on there, which is, you know, people from the Caribbean who come here, want to recall the homeland. So they build these little casitas where they can hang out and, and be in the garden, remember you know, the homeland. So I did uh, this sculpture, it's about, I don't know, eight by eight by six. Uh, you know, powder coated steel, and then recalling like maybe like fruits from the Caribbean, and you know, maybe the farmer and his wife. But it's in the front of the building in the courtyard where the, ki the children can interact with it and play with it and sort of recall the history of what was there before, but then they can also use it for, for play. And that's what I like about the, the, the work that I do as a sculptor is that it's uh, interactive. So I want people to engage in the work mm -hmm. so that if I did one of them is called the tree of hope and it has a little, a little seating around it so you can sit in the sculpture so you can look at it but also you can interact with the artwork as well and then so the play the, to get serious about play here is to um, have people engage in the work on beyond just being uh, sort of like an outsider, just looking at it, but being part of the artwork is, is very important so that they can, you know, they can play with it. And then for myself, I enjoy creating that, those, seeing what the things are. Because I, cre I, I created two ways. One is in my mind, right, is that I create, what I, I mean, I'm thinking about what it is I want to do. And then the, the, I created a second time when I do the actual, actual physical, artwork itself and then open it up so that people can directly connect to it and not be you know uh, sort of separated from the artwork but be connected to it yeah i think that's a huge part of my work as well with the collaborative uh, projects the springboard collective stuff in particular we often call it like a social sculpture because it's not complete until the audience comes and activates it and also like in materiality like you guys are talking about like playfulness of materials a couple projects that we've done is with plaster ice cream casting like taking plaster and calling it milk powder and having a table of like beads and toppings and you know it's very interactive for kids and families and stuff to like make these kind of sculptures out of plaster um, and engaging with like an artistic product in a different way um, or maybe for the first time and understanding how it works sculpturally and you know we used to call it like hard pack ice cream after four minutes and soft serve <laughs> after one minute you know and there's like a timing to it it hardens up really quickly so it was very playful and fun um, and people could kind of discover it on their own at their own pace and we also did a project with like sculptural deep frying so we asked people to bring any object they wanted to sacrifice to the deep fryer and oh. we coated it in panko breadcrumbs and flour and breading and then deep fried uh, a very broad <laughs> range of objects the most exciting one was a rotary telephone <laughs> that someone brought. So you couldn't, but, you couldn't eat it? No, you couldn't eat it. <laughs> we did have a second deep fryer for like experimental food that we called the culinary equalizer because, you know, everything tastes <laughs> the same when it's deep fried. But just very playful with like taking an object that's like used for something very specific um, and maybe like spinning it or, you know, seeing what we can do differently with it in a participatory way. So that's been 
something, but the audience is always like very key to like finish it. So I often feel like I'm like a hostess or like uh, running a business with some of the projects. Like we did a roller rink in a gallery space once where we got a concrete grinder and ground the concrete floor so it was super smooth. We rented a fleet of, you know, 30 rental skates and programmed a lot of public events and performance art and invited people to just come skate for free for seven days. And it was just, you know, thinking of roller skating as like, and art and as like a physical, I don't know, sculpture in and of itself, like the roller rink. We made the handrails and installed carpet in the lobby, you know, so it's like very much re referencing a business that exists in the world, but, you know, running it as this kind of like art project. So thinking about that social aspect as the art in and of itself and people bring their own histories to it, you know, their own like memories of roller skating and it's nostalgic like for many people and it's a dying, you know, the, the one just closed in Brooklyn, which is really sad, Brooklyn Skate. So it's like a needed thing to have more roller rigs, but you know, just these different icons that are out there that are very fun and serve as a space of important escape and play for people and just trying to create that with the space that we have. So that was just one project that kind of was all about some so of So it has the, it's about. the experience of, yeah. of that and it's like a, uh, what do you call it, performance mm -hmm. and also it's a time, you know, this is, it takes time. It's not something that you just look at, but you're, you're, it's the amount of time people spend mm -hmm. as well. From the experience. Yeah, yeah from the sure. experience. Yeah, that resonated with me, my current performance. Uh, that happened at the uh, Flux Factory, Governor's Island, uh, curated by Emilis Herrera. The show title was Help Wanted and Spotlights on Domestic Workers. Their works are very hard, tough, and essential to this country, uh, but it's still very invisible and unequally treated by our society. So I wanted to make a performance that the viewers can participate and work together. The work requires um, very diligent and focused and also repeated labor in fun way. So I had an idea to make an American flag by domino pieces. So I started hand paint a thousand of domino pieces and wanted to create a hard and difficult and also confusing environment because of language um, barrier. So the participants has to solve the issues and challenge the task and having fun to create America. So at first, the wind was such a big enemy for us. So one participant who was actually Sarah brought this big blanket and we had a turn to hold it up and such beautifully solved it. And another highlight for me was we cared and encouraged each other when we uh, knock over accidentally large part of dominoes. And the most important thing was we laughed a lot throughout, throughout this performance. That is, sounds very simple, but it's really difficult for many reasons in this country. Um, personally, uh, I have been feeling uh, insecure uh, because uh, I'm an Asian woman, but this performance, um, like play and art combined together, created such a great energy. At the, the end of the performance, even magically, all the almost domino pieces stood up, and I was just so amazed by all of this together happen. Yeah, it was very special. I was yeah. there and it was, it was a really lovely uh, thing about play talking about something serious too, like in a very like um, metaphorical way, you know, but then the experience itself was frustrating, but you had like your community there to kind of like encourage you yeah. to keep going. Um, at one point, your daughter yeah. knocked over, yeah. she like was playing around and knocked no, no. the entire oh, table. Yeah. <laughs> it was very sweet, um, yeah. but it was a beautiful piece, yeah. yeah.
You know, it's so interesting that it's, it's kind of impossible to talk about play without either involving children, thinking of children, or going back to our own memories of childhood. Um, and when I, when I started doing the work that I've done in the last couple of years, um, it was, I mentioned before, that I had become very interested in maps and borders. And I, I really, I've never been able to wrap my mind around the concept of people being on one side of a politically imposed line, being viewed differently, um, being dehumanized, um, marginalized, not having power, not being safe, not being allowed to just cross that line, and particularly children. And I was really focusing on the denial of the ability to play, and I have daughters myself, and um, it was sort of impossible to look at what was, you know, splashed all over the television about the hideous separation of children from their parents down at the border and, and not think as a parent about the, the richness of the individual that is in each one of those children and yet they weren't being treated that way. And so I made a painting called Safe to Play and I was focusing on um, just, just what it might do to a child if they don't have what I think so many of us have taken for granted, which is things go bump in the night, but mom and dad are in the house and it's going to be okay. Um, chaos can be happening around you, but you feel completely safe because you know, you're a, you're a young child and in that stage of your development, your world is only there for you, you're, you're immortal. The map component of it, when I started screen printing and I was looking for pattern, um, focusing on this idea of borders and migration, I found a map from the late 19th century that um, had a town on it, which was obliterated during the pogroms um, that my father's family came from. And I manipulated the map, I created an image, I made a screen print of it. And I started using that map, um, printing it on lots of different things, paper, fabric, different colors, and cutting it up and putting it into the figure so that almost every painting that I have made in the last four years or so has some some portion of it, an arm made up of, if you, if you might think it's just pattern, but you get close to it and you see that it's an old map of Eastern Europe. Just thinking of uh, the world that our children are growing up in and that we are leaving them with and the cycles of repetition of, um, you know, getting very dark here, but fascism coming back and all of that sort of thing. And I started using also in those paintings um, some images from um, the Berlin Wall and from um, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin at the Yalta summit, you know, carving up Europe and creating those borders. So play in my work then evolved in terms of the subject into the internal experience of a girl, I think because I have daughters and, and I'm a woman, that's what I relate to most naturally. And just kind of what goes on in a, in a young girl's mind when she's playing or if she's pensive or if it looks like it's a really joyful moment, but in fact it's fraught with all of the things that she is facing at that age. That's serious. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get serious about play here again. Um, <laughs> the the what I thought of when you said about maps and things is um, puzzles, because since these are templates and these are pieces, uh, I, there was a, a recent well, I'm in the show right now in this uh, gallery, um, and some children came in, and adults too, so they were looking at the the print that was uh, without the pieces in it. And it was interesting to me that they're, over, they're trying to figure out, because the sculpture was there too, how it was put together. So they're, in their minds, they're doing this uh, thinking of, of putting this stuff together, and, and that's play. And I love that, that they're engaging in the work in that, in that way. So, mm -hmm. um, so puzzles are something that 
comes into play, that is play, you know, you put something together. So I, I wanted to just share that part of it, that there's so many different aspects to the work that I'm doing, uh, the different components of it, and then uh, try people working to make the connections between the different parts of what, the, what, what this work is. And that makes it, you know, interesting and exciting. If I can bring people into to play with the work in that way, then that's fantastic. Yeah, I think the childhood sense of play is often like, I don't know, it seems childlike and that has like a weird, you know, not serious yeah. connotation as well. Like I think humor and play are often disregarded, just like not as serious. And so, I don't know, that's something I really want to like take right face to face and all of my work is just like that play is serious and that you know that childlike experience of like really letting yourself believe in like spontaneity and imagination like truly is fun you know <laughs> and can like open up possibilities that you never could have planned you know planned for so I try and do that with a lot of my work as well. Like there's a project called Trivial Pursuits Dinner Party, which I organized and it's a six course meal of pie, all pie. I also do food <laughs> art, but it's, it's very playful. It's for 36 dinner guests, six teams of six. Um, it's not very competitive, it's very playful, but I have a panel of experts that present on each category and it's kind of uh, riffing on the Trivial Pursuits categories and that's about it. The pies, the colors, and the categories are you know, the only thing in, <laughs> in common, but it's, the goal is basically to like, enable the audience to become a part of it very effortlessly. So it's like we plan and we rehearse to a degree, but it's also very raw and playful. Like, we're playing roles like I'm the host and I kind of have this character role that I'll play but it's very loose and I break character and I might screw up my lines like it's not a polished performance you know but it's very playful but that I find like allows the audience to kind of start to pretend to also take part in this and it's very interactive different categories and like slightly competitive games just to get people up and out of their seats and dancing or whatever the thing is it's like a fashion show and uh, we had a water fight on governor's island last year as the finale so it all kind of leads to culminate in this uh, playful kind of explosion playfulness in art allows us as artists to do our truest work, that we're finding something that's really honest and comes from our emotion and our engagement with each other in the world. I think when play and art combine together in a collaborative way, creates such a great energy. If we live without play, maybe our world is much boring. It's fun to play and it's fun to create art. And when you play at art, that's the best. I think play and art are magical ways to create things that you never thought possible. <laughs>